Good afternoon everybody and welcome back to an unfortunately bit of a dreary day in our Isle of Wight office. My name is Ellis, I'm a solicitor at Lordit and regulars and listeners of the podcast will probably know that. Um, today I thought we would jump on quickly a new piece of law that's come in um, and speak to Mark Reed, a solicitor at Lordit uh, who deals with our family matters. Good morning, good afternoon Mark. It is a good afternoon now and I have to say, you say about it being dreary outside but... Look, I mean, we need a bit of rain, don't we? Let's be honest. It's all well and good when we're constantly, you know, pleading for sunshine. Uh, but in actual fact, the rain helps soak stuff in and get us ready for the summer so we don't end up with a drought. But anyway, good afternoon to you. Good afternoon. I would like to just quickly say, I don't think you were thinking that this morning when you came in and you were soaking wet. It was soaking wet. It wasn't very nice, I have to say. No, I remember we're not used to it. We've had a, a good couple of weeks or so without any rain, but there we go. Anyway, look, we have... <coughs> pardon me. We have got sunshine on the horizon though because as you've uh, just rightly pointed out there is a big big 30 odd year change that is happening as of the 6th of april 2022 in relation to divorce now do you know what i'm talking about i do i believe that is the (coughs) non-fault divorce so at the moment as far as i'm aware um, in order for, for two people to get divorced, there's five reasons. And um, essentially, there has to be some element of blame. Unless, unless yeah, there's a, a, long, a long-term separation involved. Yeah, you've One got a t- two to five-year rule. Yeah, there's a two to five-year rule. Um, you, you know, if you haven't had anything that's gone wrong, you have to be separated for a certain amount of time. Um, I'll be honest, I want to skirt around that simply because mm-hmm. that's not what we're here to, here to talk about. You're yeah. right. That in terms of the blame game, we usually will um, actually find that someone has, oh, well, there's an argument that one party has done something wrong in the uh, in in the marriage, uh, whether it be, I mean, I don't know, it could be, you know, it's irresponsible behaviour. It could be the gambling, or they've got an addictions, or there's uh, there, there's a domestic abuse, or there could be adultery. Yeah, infidelity. You know, there, there's lots of reasons why, and it's a very very difficult time for anyone that is uh, going through a divorce. And I have to say, I I, I do battle. Um, on, a, on a weekly basis with clients that have had a, really a terrible ordeal um, and it's not nice for anyone. However, in more of a, I mean, it's, it's none of it's really positive, is it? But I guess when you've got a situation where two people have just, I mean, let's just say they've fallen out of uh, love with each other, there's no reason that they, they need to start sort of throwing mud at each other. They just want to live separate lives. And what's happened in the last 30, I think it's been 35 years where there's been quite clearly, um, you know, a, a lot of um, campaigning for a change in the law. There were some attempts that were made to change the law. I believe it was 1996. The legislation wasn't great, and sadly, they had to just kind of scrap the whole thing. Um, and uh, and really, the changes are to allow two people who are, you know, who are not finding that they have got any reasons to, to start a big dispute, are able to now, as of the sixth of April, with the new portal uh, that's going to allow people to go relatively easily online and say, look, you know, I want to do an application, a petition for divorce. And here are the reasons. Here's my statement. Yeah. And I think if, um, correct me if I'm wrong, there is a kind of a little change in terms of the whole process will now be different. Obviously, before, like you said, there was the blame game. And on the basis of one of those five reasons, the divorce was then granted. Now the system has changed. Um, So please do get in touch if Mm. you want to discuss that. And we can take you through in a much more in-depth discussion about the process changes. Absolutely, and um, you you know, just back to basics, we obviously have to remember that there's a very big difference in terms of any dispute. If you've got two people that are saying, look, there's no one to blame here, but we just want to be able to divorce and go our separate ways. That's only the left-hand column dealt with. You're still gonna have the financial remedy aspect that may cause a bit of a dispute, a bit of a, you know, it's an overriding of, of objective to keep things fair and amicable. And let's be honest, it's a much better world if we can all do that. And that's what the court expects from both parties um, to, to keep things amicable and fair and transparent so that it can be a much smoother ride. You know, so you're still gonna to have to deal with that and that does sometimes cause a bit of friction there. Yeah. But certainly on the on the left hand side of the column, well dealing with the divorce aspect only, 
um, to go online and, and, and unless it's deemed necessary, not have to deal with some you know, 20 odd pages, 28 pages of, of petition where you're going to go through every single page. In actual fact, if you can actually have an online portal where you can have an accompanying statement from one or both parties, if the court considers it fair and reasonable to do so, they will grant the divorce even though there has not been unreasonable behaviour um, argued uh, from from uh, from one of the parties. Yeah, and, and I appreciate what you say in terms of the, the financial side of things and the uh, division of assets is a, kind of a whole different ball game. But you would hope that seeing as the divorce itself now has no blame attached, there's mm. not already sort of battlegrounds drawn and, yeah. and people haven't already got their back up. Hopefully it will lead into much more easier smoother negotiations on the financial side absolutely however really important to note if you've got one party that's just suddenly decided that they wish to divorce that does not automatically mean that it's all going to go through if it's a defended divorce and one and the other party is deemed uh, the divorce to not be appropriate in whatever the circumstances they can contest it and if it becomes a defended divorce then you are still going to have a road to fight and, um, and, and that's really important to remember. It is not as simple as one person just wakes up one morning, decides they don't want to be married to this person, and then because they no longer have, because of the no, no, no um, fault divorce um, laws that are now coming through, um, that, that doesn't automatically give them the right to just end potentially like 20 odd years just for whatever reason. There needs to be a little bit more to it. And obviously, yeah, that's got to be a bit of an agreement. Absolutely. And you'd like to think that both will agree to it, whether they're happy about it or not. Uh, but if not, do do get in touch and we can discuss that. It is imperative that your statement is drafted, uh, you know, well, and it's uh, it's expressing all the points without, of course, throwing the kitchen sink at it. Um, but uh, but but equally, I mean, it, it is positive news because there are, you know, I, I do I do get a lot of frustrated clients on the phone over the course of the year who says that this is just this is just silly. How can someone else decide, you know, for me? as to you know whether if both parties wish to be divorced why do they have to wait for a certain amount of time if there's a clear thing it could have been something that had been going on for years but they've been living together there's lots of reasons why well this will now allow that process to be hopefully a little bit smoother and uh, and, and and helpful for both parties yeah absolutely so please do uh, keep your ear on the podcast for more podcasts on sort of family law matters and if there's anything that we can assist with and you want to discuss on a confidential basis please do pick up the phone um, and get in touch with either mark or one of the team yeah. uh, on 02380 235979 or visit our website at www.lawdit.co.uk um, so just just to also finalize that point there, i think it's imp- it's also important to remember that this is a very small part of divorce proceedings and you know as i, I touched on earlier in terms of the financial remedy i'm going to do another podcast on that i think it's really crucial that our listeners can sort of understand if we can try and put it into basics but try and understand if i can just drill home certain points um that i think will be uh, will will be important and certainly to those that are possibly thinking about this road ahead and, and and wanting to know the right way to go um it's very easy to get clouded by frustration or and I'm not going to say greed in a bad way, but you know, certainly when you've worked hard towards something for many years, the last thing you want is to you know, feel that you've just got to agree to, to anything just to sort of end it. So I'm going to do another podcast on that. So uh, stay tuned for that. Um, but yeah, I guess thanks for listening to me and thanks for inviting me, Ellis. You're very welcome. Thank you for joining me. Take Thank care, you all. Thank you everyone for listening. Bye-bye. Thanks.